For years and years, American car enthusiasts kept hearing promises that Alfa Romeo was going to bring its sexy Italian cars back to our market. We finally got a taste of that in 2014 with the introduction of the hugely fun to drive but deeply impractical 4C sports car. But now Alfa Romeo is back here in earnest with much more well-rounded vehicles. Alfa's American invasion begins with the brand new Giulia sedan. In its most pedestrian forms, it's designed to take on cars like the Audi A4, BMW 3 Series, and Mercedes-Benz C-Class. And then this version, the hot Quadrifoglio, is here to compete with nameplates like M3 and C63. That's a tall order. Does the brand new Italian car have what it takes to compete with those segment heavyweights? How does it look? It is gorgeous. The Giulia is beautiful from every angle, and especially when it's decked out in all the Quadrifoglio goodies, it becomes incredibly aggressive. I love the low nose, sultry haunches, carbon fiber add-ons, and flowing curves all over the body. It has a great stance and looks so much prettier than anything else in its class. How's the storage? Alpha still doesn't have an exact cargo space figure for us, but just subjectively, I can tell you that this is probably on the small side for this class of cars. The opening isn't enormous, and inside it's a little bit narrow, in part because you've got things like the battery back here in the trunk. But perhaps the biggest obstacle to fitting a lot of stuff inside your Julia is going to be that the back seats don't fold down like they do in most of its competitors. Now in the base Julia, you can fold the back seats, but in the Quadrifoglio, that mechanism was eliminated to save a little bit of weight. So with that in mind, let's see how well our new suitcases from away fit back here. Storage in the center console cubby is on the marginal side. But hey, this car is for driving, not hauling along all your worldly possessions. The cup holders are great, but if you put something tall, like a big water bottle or coffee cup, it'll block some of the climate controls. And you won't be able to fit that water bottle in the door pockets either. Is it roomy? For the driver and passenger, there's loads of adjustment in the power seats, plus plenty of leg and elbow room. You get lots of headroom too, because you can't get a sunroof in the Quadrifoglio. That's because the roof is made from carbon fiber. Back seat knee room isn't bad, and with the seat position so I can drive comfortably, I could sit back there for a short distance. There's no fold down armrest, and the transmission tunnel is so bulky, I wouldn't try to seat anyone but the tiniest of children in the middle position. How does the interior feel? Everything that you look at and touch in here is really nice. Now, depending on your viewpoint, you might say that the interior is a little bit plain, or you might just say that it's purest and focused. Personally, I really like it, especially the details like the red stitching and the carbon fiber trim. But there's some other things that maybe don't work quite as well as in some of this car's competitors. I love these big, real aluminum paddle shifters, for instance. They look great and feel great, but they're so big that you kind of have to stretch your fingers to get around to these stalks. Now, that's not a problem for me, but I can imagine that if you have short fingers, you might be annoyed by that. I'm also annoyed by the climate control knobs. The first time you turn them, they don't actually change the temperature. You have to turn them a second time once you've gotten the attention of the system. And there's other little details like the fact that some, but not all of these buttons on this steering wheel light up at night. But in general, this is a really nice, very driver focused place to be. And of course, my favorite detail has to be the big red start stop button on the steering wheel. Is it well equipped? You can have pretty much every feature available on all of the Julia's competition, including things like remote start, active safety with pre-collision braking and lane departure warning, heated seats, and a heated steering wheel. A big sunroof is available on the base model, and there are several wheel options, and of course, carbon ceramic Brembo brakes for the Quadrifoglio. How's the infotainment system? It's great that the Julia has an Alfa Romeo-specific infotainment system, rather than just a rebranded Chrysler one like you get in Maseratis. And it looks really great in the center stack. It's integrated really well, so in most light, you can't see where the display ends. You operate everything on the screen with this rotary knob. While it isn't the greatest infotainment system I've ever used, after playing with it for a while, it's straightforward enough to navigate through the various menus. You can write numbers or letters on top of the knob for the navigation system. There are physical volume and tuning controls too, but no physical shortcuts to jump between, say, the radio and nav displays, so you always have to back out to the main menu first. Support for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto isn't ready yet, but will be available for the 2018 model year. Is it a good daily driver?
because we're in the quadrifolio version, the sportiest version of the Julia, obviously it's a little stiffer and louder and a little more aggressive than the base models. But overall, I'm very impressed with how civilized this car can be. When you put this drive mode selector into N for natural or A for advanced efficiency, the exhaust shuts up, the adaptive dampers soften, and there's nothing that really would prevent me from wanting to use this as my daily driver. The only thing I'd really criticize in terms of daily driving is the brake feel at low speeds, because there isn't any. This car has a brake-by-wire system similar to what you have in the Acura NSX and some electrics and hybrids, and because of that, you don't get great feedback for how much braking force you're using through the pedal. And so when you're in stop-and-go traffic or parking, it's a little difficult to modulate exactly how much braking you need. It takes me some getting used to before I can stop smoothly every time. Is it fun to drive? Wow, that's more fun to drive than I expected. It's a ton of... Uh, let's start with the engine, 505 horsepower from a 2.9 liter bi-turbocharged V6 and 443 pound-feet of torque. Now, sometimes it takes a little while for the turbos to wake up at low speed, but this is a great engine that loves to rev, really responsive. I have an eight-speed automatic transmission. It's the only transmission offered in the US, but it's really quick and responsive to these paddle shifters when I want a downshift or upshift. So although I'd like a manual transmission, it's not a deal breaker. The other great thing is the steering. It's incredibly quick the second that you want to go into a bend, and it does that without being twitchy on center, so this car doesn't feel nervous at speed when you're in a straight line. There's great chassis composure from this car, especially when you go up into dynamic or race mode with the dampers in their stiffest setting. It's very, very poised. There's not too much roll or dive when you go into corners. It also sounds really phenomenal. I love the way this car sounds, all the crackles on the shifts, but it really only sounds best in dynamic or race modes. In the other modes, it's very quiet. And that sort of gets to one of my frustrations with the Julia Quadrifoglio. Some of this car's competitors let you kind of mix and match a little bit more. You could have the loud exhaust in the most comfortable laid back driving mode. But in the Julia, you kind of have to go all in or nothing. If you want race mode, you have to fully commit to it. And I would kind of like it if I could customize that a bit more. How's the fuel economy? With cylinder deactivation and engine stop-start, the Julia Quadrifoglio returns 17 miles per gallon city, 24 mpg highway, and 20 combined. That's right on the money for similar sports sedans with this much power. The standard Julia, by the way, with its 280 horsepower engine, returns as much as 33 mpg. How much is it? The regular Julia starts at just $39,000. The Quadrifoglio version runs from about $73,000 to $87,000, pretty similar to what you'd spend on its competition. This particular car is $83,000. Major options on it include the carbon ceramic brakes, which are $5,500, and the active safety system, which is $1,250. What are the negatives? There's really not a lot that I dislike on this car. Sure, the interior could be a little bit prettier, and the steering and low-speed braking feel could be a little bit better. And of course, I really wish we could get the six-speed manual transmission that's offered in Europe. But perhaps the biggest obstacle to somebody buying a Julia is going to be just finding somewhere to buy one. Because Alpha is a new brand in the US, there's only 166 dealers here at the moment. But the good news is, within the next year to 18 months, Alpha plans to have as many as 270 showrooms open. Who should buy it? anyone who wants a great driving sedan that looks really, really beautiful. To be more specific, I would much rather have the Julia Quadrifoglio than a BMW M3, and it's pretty close to as good as the AMG C63. Now, the Julia has a lot to prove. It's Alpha's first real attempt to come back to the US market. But whether you get the Quadrifoglio or the base one, it's a gorgeous car that's a ton of fun to drive, and I really hope this car is a sales success for Alpha. Hey guys, if you liked this Why Buy video as much as I like this Alfa Romeo, be sure to scroll down and click the like button. And be sure to leave a comment letting us know what you thought about this, or if there's any other cars you want us to review on future Why Buys. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can get all of our Why Buy videos. We've got a new one for you every single Thursday. And you can follow us on all of your favorite social media channels, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, as well as at motor1.com.